What's up guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to make your DJI FPV footage look amazing. Let's go. Hey guys, so regardless of what anybody has said or done or whatever, you've decided to buy the DJI FPV Quad, congratulations. And if you haven't, congratulations because you should build it and all that stuff. I come from FPV, you should, you know, do that. But if you haven't crashed it, you're probably wondering how to get the best image quality out of this cinematic FPV drone. So luckily I've been working with the decent alike footage, the DJI decent alike footage for quite a while now. So I can probably help you with that. Let's talk about your final output goals. So like I said before, FPV is filmmaking. So you're gonna have to think about that, your input and output. Do you want to edit a video for your personal FPV channel or is it for a commercial or film or maybe you just want to fly and then watch it back and show your friends on your phone or whatever. So depending on your output goals, this is going to be different on how strict you want to be on how you configure your DJI FPV settings. Let's say you want to film for your personal FPV channel. So whether it's YouTube, Instagram or TikTok, it's going to probably be 100% FPV footage. So it's probably better to shoot at a higher frame rate, like 60 frames. If you're comfortable flying with a higher latency, then you can use 4K. But because YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok are mostly viewed on the phone nowadays, you're probably going to be okay shooting at 1080. Uh, that way you can fly at lower latencies and you can show off your best flying, which is probably what you're trying to do. Now, if you're shooting for a commercial or film, you're mostly going to want to shoot at 4K for sure. And ideally at 23,976 or 24 frames. Now at the time of this recording, 24 frames is not enabled on DJI FPV. I've heard that it is coming in an update, but don't hold me to that. So as of right now, 30 frames is probably your best bet. Unless they want to slow it down later, then you can shoot at 4K 60. You're gonna just have to deal with the higher latency thing. So for these social media posts and commercials and films, you're probably gonna to want to have the best color always, all the time. So let's set your color temperature manual. manual that's the first thing uh, if you're shooting outdoors that's gonna be 5600 if you're indoors in tungsten it's gonna be 3200 but if you're working on a film set you probably want to ask your DP hey what's the color temperature of the scene you want me to shoot at and they'll, they'll just tell you but you want to get this right because if you don't you're gonna it's gonna be bad okay so let's shoot with the decent alike color profile uh, you can configure that in your goggles and you can boost your contrast and saturation a little bit on just in your goggles now usually on regular cameras pro cameras prosumer cameras you can shoot on a log profile and they're going to give you this like display light that you can shoot with so you can see the contrast and the color and all that stuff dji doesn't have that right so you're going to have to f get used to flying with this flat image and you're not going to be able to see the scraggle. You're not going to be able to see the details and stuff like that. So you're just going to have to practice and get used to that. Sidebar, hey DJI, enable display lights in the pro version that you might be coming out with. You're welcome. So with the DJI decent alike image, you'll be able to retain the maximum dynamic range and color information, or at least that's the idea. I mean, it's not long, but that's the idea. Now, Keep in mind that you're gonna to have to color grade this to make it look decent for consumption. Now, if you're interested in just flying and showing your friends, then I would recommend just putting the color with DJI normal color. And so you have the full contrast and color baked in. Now, it's gonna probably blow out your highlights a little bit and stuff like that, but you know, you're just doing it for fun. So whatever, you wanna have the best flying experience. So. I would not recommend flying with a decent alike because you're not going to be able to see anything. Or, I mean, better than analog, but you know what I'm talking about. So now that you've shot your footage with the most optimal settings, let's ingest the footage and create an edit. Now, I like to use DaVinci Resolve not only because it's free, but it's one of the most powerful color grading platforms out there. You can use Adobe Premiere or Final Cut Pro, and those have some nice tools, but professionals will ultimately use something like DaVinci Resolve to do the final color grading. So why not just go there in the first place, right? Like I mentioned before in the beginning, this video is about how to get an awesome image, not a so-so image. Okay, so now that we have the edit, uh, let's select a general scene, a scene that represents a majority of your flight. Because we've locked your color temperature, you should be able to grade this clip, and with this one version of this clip, you should be able to 
apply that to most of your clips unless your lighting has changed dramatically while you're flying or you use different clips to make your edit. So the first thing we want to do here is transform your color space into something that's standard. This is something you can't do with Premiere Pro or Final Cut. This allows you to translate the color of this particular camera into the standard color palette that we color grade off of. Now you don't have to do this if you're not matching a lot of cameras and stuff like that, but I like to do this to maintain consistency and to see the standard color profiles and color science, color space, you know, all this stuff. So this is what I do. Also sidebar, there's no right and wrong way to grade. Every digital colorist will grade in a different method uh, depending on how and where they learn from. So just keep that in mind. But for me personally, I like to keep things as simple as possible. That's my philosophy on color grading. I've done a lot of work for you. I created a super light and this is specifically for the DJI decent like profile. So what I've done here is tested a variety of scenarios with different decent light cameras and created a super light. So you can go and try other ones out there, but I can assure you that that this is one of the best ones out there for this. So you can apply this on the Pocket, Action, Mavic Air, or this DJI FPV drone. They're all gonna look slightly different. So let me show you how I use this super light. We're gonna put the LUT onto the output node here. If you're into music, this is similar to putting a compressor or a limiter on one of the bus faders or the master bus. Shout out to my musicians in the house. Let's see if the super LUT looks like on and off. Not so bad, right? Not so bad. Okay, so now this is our base. Let's create a, another node in between. And you can think of this as a channel dynamic uh, kind of plugin. Again, music reference. Uh, this is gonna allow you to tweak each clip individually so that each clip matches each other. This is important because each clip is gonna look slightly different based on the angle of the sun in relation to the camera. And if you also have mixed flights, they're gonna come from different clips shot at different times of day. So the color temperature may vary a little bit. My personal method, and again, everybody is different, but for me, it is to do as little as possible to the image. Also, if you're doing a massive grade, it's best to do as little as possible in increments so that you can layer every change. You can think of it as Photoshop layers, same thing. So now for FPV, you probably wanna do as little work as possible anyways. So we're not gonna do anything more than one node unless we see something funky going on, like tinted glass or something, which probably won't happen for FPV. So that looks pretty good. We've adjusted the main curve, the RGB curves, and the highs and lows just with this one tool. Of course, there's many, many tools here. We've already shot it with the most optimal settings and we're grading with the super light, so you won't have to do much. And let's keep an eye on the scopes and make sure we've spread out the image enough to get the most out of the range here. Now here's a trick that I've been using most recently. What I like to do is pull down the mid lows on the curve a little bit to give the image some girth. And then I like to pull up the gamma to give the image that modern pop. Now you don't want to overdo this but it's similar to a push and pull method used in the music world. This really allows you to make finer adjustments to the gamma and that really define the contrast of the image as a whole. Now that you've graded your clip to your liking then you can copy and paste this to your next clip and make adjustments uh, for to each one. As I'm doing this, I sometimes tend to find a better grade and then I'll go back and A-B test this to the original grade. It's a good way to gauge your grading process and see if you're on the right track or not. Sometimes grading can get really out of hand and so you actually might destroy the image uh, in a lot of cases. So it's important to A-B test this and compare this to your original grade and your flat image. Now sidebar, if you do like what you're seeing here and you want to try these super LUT, the link is in the description on where to get it. So now that I've shown you the correct way to color grade, I'm going to show you the cheat method. If you really need to get a post up really, really fast, or you need to have a quick turnaround for a commercial and you're color grading it, you can use this method. You can still get a good result, but it's not as precise as the first method. So what you want to do is create an adjustment layer and put this on top of the clips that are similar to each other. You're most likely going to have some clips that are different from a different take. So you want to group these together and make sure uh, you're on the right one. Now what you're going to do is then grade the actual adjustment layer. That way all of your grouped clips are going to show the same grade and then you do that for the other ones. You can do this in Premiere Pro and with some finagling you can do it in Final Cut but again DaVinci Resolve is free and the most powerful for grading so probably easiest to do that. Okay so now let's talk about the output. This is actually really important and nobody really talks about it which is surprising but if you've ever uploaded to YouTube or Facebook and thought your platforms completely destroy your footage well you're going to want to pay attention. You can output at a higher resolution and some people found that that does 
does work for with YouTube especially, but that's also because it allows for the higher resolution. But the real reason that it's better is because of the actual data rate. To get the utmost ultimate quality, you can actually upload a ProRes file directly to YouTube and then it'll do that conversion for you. But who has that kind of internet speed and time and whatever, right? So let's stick to H.264 and let's do this. You want to go to the data rate here and set it at around 50,000. You can go a little lower, but I wouldn't go lower than 40 megabit. If you leave it on auto, the computers kind of decide and look at your image and lower the data rate at some portions and bring the data rate higher. But ultimately, it's just trying to give you a small file. So it's going to give you the lowest data rate possible. And then you're going to get destroyed by YouTube and Facebook. That's what usually happens. Also, Facebook, Instagram and TikTok have a actual resolution limit because they don't want to deal with all that resolution, right? So even if you try to upload a 4K file, it's not going to do you much good. It's actually better to have a 1080 image or, you know, whatever resolution they have exactly just with a higher data rate. So for vertical videos, you want to reframe. For Instagram, you want to make your one by one and four by five, all that stuff. And then I'll put that. You don't want to crop it in your phone or stuff like that. You're just going to start destroying your image. Okay. So now that you have your separate YouTube, Instagram file and TikTok file, you probably want to check your image. So you, you're going to want to put it on your phone, put it on your TV, you know, just look at it at different places and just check your work, just check your color and see if it actually looks good. You don't have to do this every single time, but you're going to want to check it a little bit before you know, once you get used to what it looks like, so that, you know, once you post it, it's, it's, it's up there, you know, you can't, you could take it out, but then you have to repost it again and all that. So just saying. So that's the way you're going to make your FPV footage look amazing, especially with the DJI FPV stuff by using my super light. You can use other filters and stuff like that too, using the same method. And you're going to get to a certain level of quality, of course. But if you do like what you're seeing in this video, then I would suggest just getting the super light and It'll just make your life super easy. Just follow this whole video and then you should be able to get something really, really nice. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe if you'd like to see more film and FPV tips. Now, as always, go forth and FPV, my friends. Love you all. We'll see you in the next one.